Hey everyone, it's Grandmaster Ben Feingel with a recap from round one of the candidates. Look at the All-American matchup, Fabiano Caruana versus Hikaru Nakamura. They played an anti-Berlin, well, I mean, N N Hikaru played the Berlin and D3 as expected. Bishop C5, <coughs> Bishop takes, and we've seen this before. And in this position where they both blitzed out pretty quickly, Fabi played the slightly unusual knight b3, which we were later told was played in a U.S. championship game between Robson and Dominguez, I guess about a year ago. Um, and in that game, in this position, Dominguez castled queenside, which is typically what black does. Black castles queenside and starts pushing his pawns here. Well, Naka did half of that. Half's pretty good. He played rook b8, confusing Fabi. And now Fabi went into a big thing and I guess was on his own, and seemed like Nakamura was playing pretty quickly. He played bishop g5, engine recommended, pushed his king's side pawns, and played knight d7. The point of knight d7 is the queen defends the g-pawn so he can play h5 and so forth, mainly and so forth. Also, the knight on d7 shores up the defense of the e5-pawn, which we can shore up even more with f6, as long as it's not polyshore. Right? Okay, buddy. Okay, so after knight d7, d4 was played. You could play uh, h5 in this position. <laughs> Naka quickly played f6, so that already gives away the result of the game. Never play f6. However, your mind will change in a few moves. Queen d3 after long thought. That way the knight can go to c4, Blanc can go to c4, the rook trick can connect it and go into the center. Pretty good move. h5, threatening h4. Takes on e5, takes on e5, takes on e5, takes. Two knights against two bishops. What else? <clears throat> now, black's position looks a little odd. His pawns are here. His king's on e8. His rook's on b8. He's got doubled pawns. He has an isolated pawn. All that stuff is a little negative, but he's got two bishops against two knights. So the engine says it's about equal. Knight c4, attacking the pawn on e5, rook to d8, knight takes d6. The engine actually said this move was fine. That's not a move I would normally think of, straightening out my opponent's pawn structure. But it gets rid of the two bishops, at least. Queen e3, g4. And this is the key, one of the key positions of the game. Here we're threatening the pawn. Black can play a6 or c5. He decided to play a6, which is fine. c5 is also good. And after b3, uh, the engine says it's about equal, but this is a very difficult position to play for both sides, but I think especially for black, because it's not clear what to do with his king. Some variations, black just leaves his king here. Sometimes he runs over to the queen side, pretending he castled queen side. And <clears throat> he played a decision here, Nakamura did, which the engine doesn't approve of. He castled king's side. Obviously, the king is wide open there since he moved all of his pawns on the king's side. And in the end, that may have cost him. Now, I told you when black played f6, you knew the result of the game, but I tricked you because now white played f3. Never play f3. However, the engine says f3 is the best move, probably because black played f6, so the universe was out of whack, something like that. Queen g7, also not liked by the engine. Queen g7 looks completely normal to me. Takes, takes. Now we have an open king. There's no pawns in front of it. This pawn is isolated and weak. And after the move rook d1, Hikaru made a decision which I think he's going to later regret. Instead of batting down the hatches and trying to defend and be solid, he got aggressive. I don't know if he thought this was good or he thought... This position's not good. We have to get aggressive. I'm not sure what, is, what he was thinking. And he played d5. Not engine approved. Fabi traded on d5 and played rook e1. Tremendous pressure on this pawn now that the pawn's not on d6 anymore. You don't want to play e4, putting all the pawns in the same color as your bishop, which I was explaining to Karen about a week ago in Vegas. Don't put your pawns there. Don't do that. But, I mean, you can't lose your e5 pawn. So you got to do something. So he ended up playing e4, and <clears throat> Fabi exploded black center, 
Rook takes f8, Rook takes f8, c4. If you told me before the game Fabi was going to explode all over Hakaru, I would have said, eh, okay. Sounds reasonable. C4, explosive, and now these pawns are should do be shattered. All these pawns are weak now, and Black's King is still unsafe. Rook e8, engine says that's terrible. It plays any move but rook e8. Queen f6 is the engine preferred move, taking over the f file. Or if rook f1, we can try to trade rooks. If we trade everything, the black king doesn't seem so naked. Rook e8, takes, takes. Now in this position, the engine really liked rook f1, taking the f file. Fabi played knight e1 because he really wanted to play knight e3. I can't blame him because that knight was good on e3. Queen h6, exclamation mark. Queen d6, exclam, knight e3. And the engine just says white's winning. This pawn's weak. This pawn is blocking all of black's pieces. This knight is be a beautiful blockader. Knife f5 is coming. Rook f1 is coming. And the king has no shelter. Man, I said, should you be shattered? Then no shelter? Give me shelter. It's a rolling stone kind of game. G3 was played, and now the engine wants to ignore that and just play rook f1 and king h1 and say knight f5 is coming and I'm completely winning. If two engines were playing, this is what white would have done. But these aren't engines, these are humans. After g3, Fabi's like, thanks for the pawn. Queen e5, trying to get into a worse ending, but obviously white's king is safer than black's king. That determines when we would trade queens. Figure out whose king is safer. Black's king is less safe. White doesn't want to trade queens. So white always repeats, always repeat, and then plays queen h6. Naka wins his pawn back, but at what cost? Rook f1, and black's position is in shambles. The king has no protection. The bishop on c6 can't go anywhere. The knight's coming to f5, and the white king is very safe, and white has the f file. Now here time trouble was ending. This was move 38. The engine wants to play queen d6. Fabi played queen h4. Queen h7. Queen g3 check. And now queen d6. But he went back to h4. And instead of repeating, Naka played bishop d7 ostensibly to stop knight f5, which the engine wants to play. The engine's like knight f5 all day. <clears throat> After very long thought, Fabi played rook d1, not engine approved. And here, it's just too difficult to play black. Knight d5 is coming, knight f6. The rook is coming up, rook d5, rook g5. It's too difficult to play for black with that king so wide open and the knight so strong on e3. And he went down very quickly. The engine says after rook e7, black is only down 1.2. But still probably a losing position. He went down fast, bishop e6, knight d5, exclamation mark. Now if you take the knight, rook g5 is a very annoying threat. It's so annoying, the engine just gives the queen up for the rook. It says, I can't stop it. So that's not good. So instead, he stopped knight f6 check by playing rook f8. Queen takes e4. Now he should play queen g4, hoping for a queen trade. Instead, queen d3 or queen g, queen e1 is the engine move. Look good. Queen h6, and now excellent move by Fabi. The obvious looking rook d3 to play rook g3 actually draws the game. The king has no escape. We can't play king h3 because there's a bishop on e6. And we just keep checking. Uh, amazing. And I'm sure he was thinking, Nakamura was, after rook d3, I have this perpetual... Fabi played the engine move, rook e1. Stopping queen e3 check forever. Now we're going to play rook e3, rook g3, and it's all over. By the way, we're threatening queen takes bishop. If the bishop moves, we could also play knight check and take this pawn if we wanted to, which we don't. Rook d8 losing immediately, but I can't really suggest anything better. Check. Knife f5. And the black, the black king is just wide open. There's no, there's no defense to that, that king. Queen f6, rook f1. I thought he would resign here. He played bishop d5. Knight h6 check, attacking the queen. 
Naka said, but your queen's attacked. He said, no, it's not. Queen g4 check. And in this position, Naka resigned. If Naka played on, he would play queen g6, the only move to save his queen. Knight f5 check. If the king goes to the f file, knight h4 check, discovered check, wins the queen. If the king goes to the h file, queen h4 check, wins the queen and the rook. We could win the queen right now, or we could take this and win the queen later. Always repeat. Just don't hang maiden one. So instead of playing king h7 or king f7, losing his queen and his rook, Naka resigned. Really nice game from Fabi. He let most of his advantage slip away a couple times, but he was never in trouble, and he always had a nice position. Um, difficult game for Naka. Probably castling queen g7 and d5 are the moves that did him in. He went from about equal to having like a very bad position, but the position was hard to play. I don't, I don't know how to play black in that position with such an open king. Fabi's king was relatively safe. Thanks for watching the recap. If you're watching here on YouTube, don't forget to see our other recaps. Don't, don't forget to follow the live coverage on Twitch, twitch.tv slash GM Benjamin Feingold. I'll see you guys next time. Yay, two down, two down.